So this article is from The Salon. It was written by Michael Gerhart from in 2013. And so it really goes to show why it's in large part Jimmy Carter's fault that Roe v. Wade was overturned. And once again, Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton and Barack Obama and Joe Biden deserve secondary blame, while the primary blame should go to Amy Barrett, John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, and also, of course, George W. Bush, Donald J. Trump, and George H. W. Bush, and the Republicans. But as I said, that, so that's where the primary blame goes, but as I said, the secondary blame goes to feckless Democrats like Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden. So let's get a little bit into this article. Jimmy Carter opposed abortion himself and did not publicly defend Roe. And keep in mind that Jimmy Carter was president from 1977 to 1981. So he was president like right in the decade of Roe because Roe v. Wade was decided in 1973. So throughout his presidency, Jimmy Carter consistently opposed federal funding for abortions. And, of course, many other issues with Jimmy Carter was that he did a lot of deregulation that is attributed to Ronald Reagan. And, of course, Ronald Reagan was really bad with deregulation and he did too much of it. But Jimmy Carter was also doing it, too. Jimmy Carter governed like a Republican. So Jimmy Carter was uh, busting up unions. Jimmy Carter was deregulating the airline industry, the railroad industry, taking sides with corporations, siding with corporations and siding against workers. And really angering and aggravating and isolating his base, turning his back on his base. Sound familiar? Because that's exactly what Joe Biden is doing. That's exactly what Barack Obama did. That's exactly what Bill Clinton did. The corporatization and the neoliberalization of the Democratic Party started under Jimmy Carter. Because prior to Jimmy Carter, the Democrats like Lyndon Johnson were New Deal Democrats. But starting from Jimmy Carter, they were corporate Democrats. And of course, they put the label of new Democrats onto a uh, of Bill Clinton, but really it should have been put onto Jimmy Carter. So Jimmy Carter has just basically isolated his entire base and alienated all of them and governed like a standard Republican, governed very similarly, as I said, to Joe Biden, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama. And Jimmy Carter basically just didn't pay attention to Roe v. Wade as all, at all. And he left Roe largely undefended, except by some Democratic congressional leaders. And Jimmy Carter... Honestly, this is even this is even worse than Joe Biden and Barack Obama and Bill Clinton because Joe Biden because Barack Obama, Barack Obama uh, before his um, election pretended to care about Roe v. Wade. Uh, Joe Biden also pretended to care about it, and um, Bill Clinton too. But like Jimmy Carter just like said nothing, so that's actually even worse. Okay, and Ronald Reagan, of course, uh, much of Jimmy Carter's base. Most of Jimmy Carter's coalition that voted for Jimmy Carter in 1976 went over to Ronald Reagan because, as I said, Jimmy Carter was busting up and destroying unions. And so the unions went over to Ronald Reagan, of course, which was a horrible mistake because Ronald Reagan ended up destroying unions completely. And Jimmy Carter's evangelical base that he courted so heavily in 1976, those guys left him and went over to Ronald Reagan. And so Jimmy Carter's just left in a position where he's just pissing off everyone, the unions and workers with the uh, union busting and all of that, and all his corporate uh, deregulatory policies are pissing off regular people. And he's not even fighting on the social issues like Roe v. Wade, which really should have been a toss-up because at the time of Jimmy Carter, um, abortion was not uh, co-opted into a huge cultural issue yet. So really, Jimmy Carter had a very good chance of defending abortion and to just codify Roe v. Wade into law. And for context, Jimmy Carter had 292 seats in the House of Representatives and 61 seats in the Senate. And that's a huge, huge supermajority just in the first half of his presidency. And in the second half of his presidency, he had, he had 277 seats in the House and 58 seats in the Senate. So he had huge majorities and he could have codified Roe v. Wade at any time. And it would have just been very simple. It really wouldn't have taken any effort either. But, 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 of course, he did nothing. He did nothing. And as I said, he governed like a very standard Republican. Jimmy Carter did. And that led to an actual Republican taking, up, taking over. And so when we say Joe Biden will lead to Ron DeSantis, when we say 
Barack Obama led to Donald Trump, when we say that Bill Clinton in part led to George Bush, we should also say Jimmy Carter led to Ronald Reagan. And once again, Jimmy Carter failed, failed to defend Roe v. Wade. So it is in large part Jimmy Carter's fault. And to reiterate, this title, pro-life Democrat Jimmy Carter didn't defend abortion rights against Ronald Reagan's attacks, helped create right-leaning Supreme Court. So that is Jimmy Carter's true legacy. So whenever we hear some rehabilitatory nonsense of Jimmy Carter, know this. And whenever you hear that Jimmy Carter was some far-left person, just know this. He was very far-right, uh, center-right at best.